Hey everyone, Jonathan Silva here. For this video, what we're gonna take a look at how we can create our very own customized SharePoint list. So let's just jump right in and start getting the list building process started. All right, so here we are on a SharePoint site that I have created. This is a team site that I have set up uh, when I generated the site and I just have myself as a member. There's nothing special to it. The way we're gonna create our list is we can come on over here and select new from our home menu. Real quick, real easy, you're on home. This is the SharePoint home site here. You can see it does have your site URL at the top, ready to go. You can just go ahead and select new from the drop down. Now you can also do this creating a new list by going over to your site contents and adding a list from there as well. But this is the easiest way to go, so might as well take the easy path. We're gonna click list right here. And from this point, this is where we can choose to either create a list from a template that's been generated from Microsoft. There are quite a few different list templates that are out there that are actually quite nice, like an expense tracker, a travel request, issue tracker, onboarding, asset manager. There's quite a lot of lists in here that you can use right away. You just click on it, create a name for it, hit save, and there it is, it's done. But what we're gonna do is though, is we're gonna create a custom list by a blank list. So we're gonna go ahead and select blank list right here and use this one. Now, all we need to do is go ahead and say that we need to create a name for this list. So uh, for this one, I think we're gonna choose a device request to create. And then we can also go ahead and declare right here, do we wanna show this in our site navigation? The site navigation will be over here on our left-hand side. So under the home, conversations, documents, notebook, pages, converted files, you'll see that all in here as another spot for a quick access into this list. You can make that choice right here, right now, if you wanna see that. Go ahead and select create, unless you wanna add in a description of your list, and then we are all ready to go. Now that my list has been created, I can just go ahead and start adding in the columns that I want for this list. You notice that I did say I want it in the navigation, so there it is. The first thing we have here is the title column. The title column is the primary column for SharePoint. This is the default where you need to make sure this is there every time and you can't get rid of it. It will always be the title column here. However, we can change the display name of this title if we want. So let's say instead of title, we want to go ahead and change it by just clicking on this, going into our column settings and choosing rename. We can say instead of title, we want to have maybe reason for request as our column name. All right. So we're just changing the display name. Technically, title is still the name of this column, it's just showing up as a different display name. So if you were to try to incorporate this into Power Automate, Power Apps, anything else like that, it's still gonna be called title in a lot of cases there if you're trying to pull that in. All right, so there is our reason for request. Now we can just go ahead and start adding columns to this list. It's quite simple. It's actually quite easy to follow along. You just gonna follow the steps here that you see on screen and then you can go ahead and do it yourself. So we can choose add column and we're gonna add a bunch of different columns in here just to get a feel for the different types of columns that we can add here. You can see there are many different column types to choose from text being one, choice, date and time, multiple lines of text, person, number, yes, no, it's like a Boolean, a link, currency, location, all these other things that you can add. The first one that I'll go ahead and choose is the person column. So we're gonna go ahead and utilize our Azure Active Directory or our Microsoft Entra ID as it will be called not too uh, far away from today. And then we're gonna go use that to go point to the people in our inside of our tenant to add this uh, add in here. So now for my column, this is a person or a group column, we can say uh, employee 
name or requester name, whatever you want to have in here. And then you can put a description if you like, and you can choose to allow selection of groups if you want. You can also choose to show the profile photo of the person making the request in here. So it actually have their image available or not. You can come here, choose more options, allow multiple selections. So you can have multiple people or multiple groups in here that are making this request. You can require that this column contains information, which I'm gonna go ahead and do that so we know who's making the request. We can enforce unique values. And we can also say if we would like to add to all content types. In this case, and for most of the cases here with my column structure, I'm gonna say no to this. So I don't need to have this saved into any of the metadata that's gonna be stored within the different columns that we have. All right, so there is our first one, employee name, and you can see our person column. It's quite easy to have there, and we're all ready. So we'll just keep on adding different parts in here for our device request list. The next one, if I wanna add another column, let's say I want to do a date column. So I have the reason for request, who's making the request, let's do the date of the request. So I'll go ahead and choose date and time, select next, and I can make a column, just call it date. All right, pretty simple there. Now for this, we do have some options with our date. We can choose date and time for the type right there. And then when we choose date and time, we can say, do we want to include the time in here as well? So not only show the date, but also include the current time of the request. Do we want to have that in a friendly format? Just something that shows up a little bit nicer. If you'd like, go for it. If you want to try it out. The default value here. What would you like to have as the default date and time, in this case, of course, time that you are working with? Would you like to have today's date or do you want to have it defaulted to a selected date and time each time? I'm going to go ahead and use today's date in here so we can automatically have whatever time it is right now and make that a lot easier on our users. Then we can select more options and of course require that this contains any information, yes and no. We're going to have this defaulted so it's probably going to do it anyway but you can also make this a required column, enforce those unique values and as I mentioned earlier, I'm going to go ahead and remove that um, from add column to content types. Now this column validation in here, you can add in some formulas in here for certain things. So you can have um, this to be working with a different type of column. If you're doing any type of like calculated columns, they kind of come in here as well. If you'd like to have, um, you can see there's a, an example here as well um, for this to, to work with if you'd like to include that on top of it. All right, so there is our date for our request. Let's keep going through this. Now we have reason for request, the employee name, the date. Let's now add in what is the device we're requesting. So we can have this open-ended like a text column or we can come in and say, hey, let's just choose a, make it a choice column. All right, so we can use this, hit next, and then go ahead and have this as our device requested column, okay? and you can keep it as a choice. And the cool thing about this is we can now declare the individual choices we wanna have on here. So do we want this for a device? Do we want it to be laptop? Do we want it to be a monitor? Do we want it to be a, a phone? I'm just coming up with all things here to add in. And you can change the colors as well if you want. So you could choose the color picker wheel here and just decide what you would like to have. Uh, what else should we have? Do we want to have a speaker? Do we want to add in a microphone? Okay, what are the other options that we want to request in here for this device request? Maybe I'll do a last one, I'll do a mouse, right? And uh, maybe if I do a mouse, maybe I'll do a keyboard as well. Okay, so you can make these all customized. You can always come back in here later on after the fact and add in more choices, take out choices as you go through, and of course, change the colors. Maybe microphone and speaker are too close, so I can change the color to something else, right? You can just go on the fly, change your color, whatever you wanna have. Maybe that's too close to there, so I'll just go ahead and change colors. Okay, you can do that really easy. You can also allow to add values manually. So that allows your user to type in their very own choice if it's not already included in the choices you have here. You can add in a default choice if you want to or leave it blank. In this case, I'll go ahead and leave it blank. 
Then you can come down here and again with more options, you can decide what you wanna show. Do you want this in a drop down menu or do you want it in a radio button? Kind of like what we see here for these. This right here, allow multiple selections, that's a radio button there. Do you wanna allow that to happen or do you want it in a drop down? If you wanna allow multiple selections on this for each item, for each row on our list, then you're gonna make sure to use a drop down menu. Otherwise you'll notice if I choose radio, it goes away. You can of course require that it contains information. I think this one makes sense to have that. And you come down here, add to all content types. You wanna take that again, all right? So we're just adding in different data types, different columns here to work with. I can even maximize, minimize some space here if I want for my columns if I like to add it like that. All right, so we have our title, which is our primary column. We've renamed to reason for request. We have employee, which is a person column or a group column, date column. We have a choice column. Let's now do another type of column in here and let's choose a currency column. The currency column can allow us to pass in, obviously, currency, monetary values. You can allow a number column to try to do that as well, but a currency column is the best way to do that here. So let's call this the price of a device or a price of item, or maybe just do cost. Let's do cost in there, make it nice and simple, all right? So you can have a currency. The number places can be automatic or you can decide how many number places. Currency format, if you're in the US, you could put that there, but you can see all of our other currencies are available for us to utilize here. So I'm gonna leave the US, leave again, default value, more options. Would you like to use a thousand separator? Yes, of course. Minimum allowed there, maximum allowed amount if you wanna add that in. Required or contains information. Maybe you don't know what the price is, so you leave that blank, or you can make an estimated guess on that. Or you, and then you can, of course, come down here, add to all content types. So we have our cost. Let's see, what else should we have in? Maybe we can add in another one, like, hey, if I have a device request, and I put this device request out there, is it gonna get approved? So we have down here, as an option here, a yes, no column to add in. If I put a yes, no column in there, I can then hit next, and then I can just call this approved. And see, has it been approved, yes or no? And then we can also put in another choice column for a status, yes, no, or whatever, whatever it may be, to, in order to say, okay, we're in the process of the approval. Is it, was it requested? Was it approved? All those things we can add in there if we want. We just get to point and click here when we create our columns. In this case, our type, yes, no. The default value, I'm gonna say no to start with just because we wanna make sure it only gets approved after the fact. You can require that it contains information, probably not in this case. And then again, of course, deselect add to all content types. All right, and again, that's not mandatory to do. I'm just doing that because we don't need to add it to any of the metadata file storage that we might have in here as well. Okay, so we now have one, two, three, four, five, six different columns added in, different data types for each. We have a text, we have a person picker, a date, a choice. Uh, we have our currency, we have a Boolean yes, no. Let's add in one last one in here just to change things up to see what we wanna have. Now, the ones we haven't done are down here. I have hyperlink, I have location, image, lookup. A lookup column would be if you already have another list available that you would like to look up to, this is where you'd go ahead and make the lookup column to go find it. So you need to make sure you have that other list available first in order for this lookup to occur. I don't have that in this case, but if I did, maybe it would be on like a device list uh, that I have within SharePoint, or maybe it's on an employee list that I wanna look up to. You can do it that way in order to gain access to that other information stored on another list. You can come in here and image, an image of the device if you wanna upload one there. A location, it's simply a location column here that you can just type in where are you Where are you right now? What branch are you in? What location are you at or wanting to go to? You can add that in here or even a hyperlink. If you have a link to the actual device that you wanna purchase, you can go and add that in there. So maybe I'll do that one. I'll say I wanna have a hyperlink and I'll go ahead and hit next and I'll say a link to device 
or something like that, and then we can use that. So we can automatically add that in here every time we make it a request, so we can make it a little bit easier to whoever is looking to approve this request. There is our hyperlink, more options, require contains information. You may not have that. You can add it to content types. In this case, let's just leave it yes. Again, it's not mandatory one way or the other. It's really gonna be up to you and your choice how you wanna save that information. All right, so now we have our columns created. What we can also do when we have our columns created is we can reorder these columns quite easily just by clicking and dragging from one place to another. So if I want reason for request, employee name, date, just like that, maybe eh, maybe I went link to device a little bit too far and I put that too far up there. So maybe I have it like this and approved goes at the end. Again, it's really up to you. You get to get a lot of control in here with your list. And once you have your list generated, the next step is you can share this out to individuals so then they, they can go ahead and also participate and work on this list. If you have all of your values done, you can also export this list to be able to use somewhere else. You can integrate this within Power Apps, Power Automate, Power BI quite easily from here. And you can go ahead and start working on the list. Now what I'll do is go ahead and just add in a request from here just to show you what it looks like and how easy it is. And to do that, we're just gonna go hit new right here. Click on new and let's start typing away. Reason for request, my laptop is so slow. Okay, I'll put my name in here and here we go. Because it is a employee name, it's a people picker, it's gonna go to a list of all the employees that we have within our tenant and be able to automatically capture that information. It gets my name, it gets my um, job title, it gets my email address, it gets everything that comes with it. I have my date defaulted here and I can choose a time if I want. So that looks okay, 3 p.m. I'll pick a time or just leave it like that. The device requested, I'm gonna go ahead and choose a laptop, all right? estimated cost of this laptop or my cost let's say this is going to cost uh i don't know let's go expensive uh maybe it's going to be a super expensive laptop there i mean it's not super expensive but it's an expensive one there okay there is my cost has it been approved nope i'm going to go ahead and put in my link that i have so i'm going to go add that in there's my link alternate text this is a surface laptop five that I'm gonna put in. If I had attachments, I can put them in here as well. And all it takes is a save. And now my request has been made. That's it, that's as easy as it goes, okay? I can have that done the date in 40 minutes. I could just say, you know, maybe I could take out the time there, put it in the past. Let's say I wanna edit this. Maybe that in 40 minutes doesn't make a whole lot of sense for the future. I can either click on the request I had and go straight in here and choose our timing, and maybe I wanna to go to 13 hours ago, okay? And I can do that, click away, and it's been saved. Or an easier way, a way that I like to use a lot, I can come in here and choose edit in grid view. And when you choose edit in grid view, you can directly edit directly from here, and I don't have to go in anywhere else. I could just choose here, and I can make a decision like that, nice and simple, okay? There's my edit, I can make all my changes, just like that exit grid view, it saves it, boom. There we are, all really simple, really easy to do. Well, thanks for joining me here, taking a look at how we can start to build out our very own customized SharePoint list. As you saw, it's really not that difficult. You just have to know where to get started and go ahead from there. If you like this video and all our videos here from Pragmatic Works, don't forget to drop a like and hit that subscribe button to get all the content that we put out every single day so you could start doing what you do now, but better, faster, and more efficiently in the future. See you next time.